Hello and thank you for joining us today here at the Brumble Patch. My name is Wendy and today on Technicals we've got Alicia. Um, first of all, I'd like to share with you, we are very, very happy to announce that we are going ahead with our Christmas exhibition. Uh, the Christmas exhibition is to showcase our customers' work. It doesn't have to be Christmas themed, it could be a bag, a cushion, a wall hanging, any size quilt. The exhibition is all about you and without you entering things uh, to inspire uh, other people, there's no point in having an exhibition. So please, please, uh, we'd love you to bring your work in so we can exhibit it. Uh, the work needs to be in by the 24th of November. The exhibition will be running from the 28th of November until the 18th of December. It's two pound to actually go in and view the exhibition with all proceeds going to a very worthwhile charity. It's the Alzheimer's Society. Uh, and we're proud to say that's the um, charity that we support. Um, if you would like to come and view the exhibition, it is by appointment only. So if you'd like to pop into the Bramble Patch or give us a call and we will take your book in. We are, we are only allowing up to eight people in the exhibition for any one time and the slot lasts for 40 minutes. Um, and it's two pound um, to actually view the exhibition. Uh, so that's what the exhibition is all about. We're also by popular demand uh, going to run a little challenge once again. And this is for a Christmas card uh, to be made. It's uh, two pound uh, to enter. Uh, the two pound will include a card and envelope as well. Uh, if you'd prefer to provide your own card and envelope, that's absolutely fine, but it is st still two pound uh, to enter the competition or the challenge. Uh, and again, those proceeds will go to the Alzheimer's Society. So please support us in this uh, and let all the proceeds go to help the charity. So without further ado, we'll now press on to what we're going to deal with today. I'll just set that aside. Today, we are going to look at how to make book covers. So I've got a few book covers here. Um, you don't have to piece them, it can just be plain fabric if you choose to. It can have a closure on it, it could have um, pieces of uh, ribbon going through it so you've got somewhere uh, to save your page. So this is one that I've just uh, done, just very, very simple piecing. And quite handy as well, in here you can actually put pieces of paper just to um, keep any tickets or notes together that you've made. So that's just one little pieced one that we've got there. Um, if you have any uh, blocks left over from particular uh, quilts or anything you've made, and you've got one that you haven't used, you could use that. This one, I've just done a little embroidery on it. Uh, and just um, set it in um, to make quite a nice book cover. So that would be notes for me to use this book uh, when I do a class. And there's lots and lots of different, and you can do all sorts of different uh, designs. This one uh, is rather nice, uh, very, very neat. And that's gonna be a, a Christmas present for someone. And I've also done an A4 book cover there as well. So. Uh, very easy to make. So first of all, I'll show you what you actually need to make that with. Uh, first of all, you will need to choose your outside fabric. If you want to use the same fabric for the inner here as the outside, you can, or you can use it exactly the same as the lining is inside. It doesn't really matter. It can, it can all be different if you wanted to. So again, you can use your bits and bobs. So, first of all, um, you will need to learn how to measure the book to get the right measurement. And it's really, really simple. So, I've got a little notebook here. And the easiest way is to use a flexible tape measure. 
If you don't have a flexible tape measure, then just use, um, it can be a piece of string and then measure it against your, your ordinary um, ruler. It doesn't really make any difference. The easiest thing to do, I find, is to actually lay your flexible tape measure on a table and place your book on top of it. So first of all, I'm going to measure the width all the way around it, okay? Now, we need the width of the book, but what we need to do is add on one and a quarter inches. So I find it easier to actually lay my book on a table and just put the edge of it on the one and a quarter inch mark. So it's just sticking out here. Then all I need to do is just pass the rest of the, the measuring tape over and hold it here. And that will tell me that I need that to measure 13 and three quarter inches. So the width that I'd be cutting is 13 and three quarter inches. So to do the height of the foot, I do it exactly the same way. would put the one and a quarter inch mark on the edge here. I'm hoping you can see that. Just there. And all I need to do is see what it measures at the bottom and that's nine and three quarters. And these are just A5 books. Okay, so that gives me the measurement that I need to cut my fabric. Okay, set that aside. So what we need is we need the measurement that we've just done and we need the outer fabric, the lining fabric, and the fabric for the two inside pieces here, these pieces, okay? So we need one more piece of fabric, exactly the same size as these. So we've got three pieces of fabric, all the same size, okay? And then what we want to do is to line it. So we want to put a little bit of wadding in it. Now the wadding needs to be cut one inch smaller than this. So if I lay this on here, I'm hoping you can see I've got an inch here all the way around. So it's just one inch smaller than the actual uh, fabrics that we've cut for everything else. Now, this is if you're going to make the book without doing any quilting on it. If we're going to quilt on it, we do need to cut it a little bit bigger because once you quilt, it actually will pull the fabric in and make it a little bit smaller. So I, if I'm going to quilt it, I would only take half an inch off of the light, off of the um, main fabric for the wadding. And actually I would add two inches onto this and then trim it down afterwards. And I'll just show you what I mean by that. This is what I've done. Um, I'm hope, I don't know if you can see that I've actually quilted this. That is just got a little vermicelli. And then I've quilted it and then cut it back so I've then got half an inch all the way around it. And I've got another one here that I've actually cross hatched. I don't know, can you see, I'm hoping the camera will pick that up. So I've just cross hatched that one and then I've trimmed it down to make it the same size again as the other two pieces. Okay, so I'll set these aside and I'll get the ones out. I'll just set that in there, okay. So what we need to do is, this one is an outer. This is going to be a main lining, the green one. And this one will make the two inner pieces for the book. So all I need to do is actually cut this in half. So if I just fold it, 
and I'm just going to put a little crease on it there. Open that up and rotary cutter here. Just leveling up the line at the bottom of my ruler to make sure that's nice and even. Just cut that straight away through. And all I need to do with this is now press it wrong sides together. Like so. And this one, do exactly the same. And that is what's going to form the inside pieces of the book. All you need to do now is actually top stitch this down the folded edge. So I would just top stitch that down there just to give it a little bit more structure. And then the next thing to do would be to take your front fabric, uh, just get the orientation of that right. And what I like to do then is actually, I like to use 505. So this is 505 spray, and this just actually adheres the wadding to the fabric, uh, and it'll stop, stop it moving around. Um, it's colorless, it's odorless, um, if it's a good day outside, then I will spray it outside with something as small as this. Uh, if I'm indoors, um, I'll just get a, an old carrier bag, uh, hold the wadding inside it and give it a spray. Because what you don't want is you don't want spray glue on the floor because you would continually stick to it. Uh, it's really good stuff. So I do use this quite a lot. So all you do then is spray that and just place that in the center, making sure you've got your margin of fabric showing all the way around. So I've already prepared one. This one. Okay. okay. And I've put little markers on this one. So it doesn't, if you're not quilting it, it doesn't matter whether you put the wadding on the lining or the front, it makes no difference whatsoever. So just make sure that you've got the orientation of everything right. So that is the outside of the book cover that I want. I've already put the wadding on the fabric. Like I say, it doesn't matter whether it's the front or the back. Obviously, if you're quilting it, it'll be on the outside fabric. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that on here. It'll help if I laid it the right way around. So I'm going to lay it right sides together. Now you probably see on here, I've just put a couple of pieces of ribbon and that's because I just want a couple of bookmarkers on this one. So I've just put a little stitch right at the very top in the center to anchor that on there. Okay, let me just turn this around a little bit more so we can actually see. I'll do this a different way because you might be able to see it better. If I hold it this way around, you can see what I'm doing. So this is the inside lining of the book. Okay, and this is going to be my um, ribbon that I'm going to use to mark my books, pages. This is the pieces that are going to go on the side. Now you'll be able to see that I've actually top stitched um, in orange just going down here. So this will go here like so. We know they fit because they're all exactly the same size. And this is the other one again with the stitch side like so. All we need to do then is to lay the front fabric on the top, like so. Now, we want to make sure that when we stitch this, we're leaving a gap to turn everything through. So I'm going to use 
a different color pin to know where I want to start and stop stitching. Like so. And then I'm just gonna put some pins in here just to make sure that I'm, I haven't got any corners flipping over or anything. Because we've actually um, cut the wadding narrower, it means we're, we're eliminating all the bulk. Uh, so it's the 505 that's holding the wadding in place for me to make sure it doesn't um, curl up or anything like that. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew from here all the way around. And I am going to use just a quarter of an inch um, on there. So I'm leaving this gap open here so that I can actually turn the book through, the book cover through. So over to the sewing machine. Right, here we go. So I'll just move on to the other way. Right, okay, so all I'm going to do is just lower the foot down and start sewing. Here we go. So when we get to the corner, just leave the needle down in the work and just pivot. And straight back the other side. Once again, we'll pivot. I'm just going to lift it out. There we go. I'm just going over the ribbon now that I've already put in place with a couple of stitches. tidy the edges up uh, and knit the corners but I never do any of that until I've turned through to make sure that everything is working nicely to make sure that I've actually caught everything in so I, I start off by just taking a corner and just easing that through and literally everything will just follow through then it just comes through really really easy Sure, I've got all that tucked through. I do like this fabric, I think it's so pretty. Okay. Right, so that's going to work really nicely. So due to the time, I'm not going to turn it back through. Normally I would turn it back through and just tidy all the corners and everything up. But I'll just ease this through 
can give it a press so you can see what's going on. There we go. So as you can see, it's forming really, really quickly. I'm just gonna give this a press now and then I'll show you the next section. So when you press this, just make sure that you are pulling the seam right out because you don't want that colour rolling through. So I'm just easing that out. If you need to use a pin to do that, then just pull it out. Just pull it out on the actual stitch seam where the two fabrics join each other and you get a much crisper finish to it. It's looking good. And once again at the end, just make sure that you're pulling all the corners out. I'm working through that. This is where, if you trim these corners off, they come to a nice crisp point. Now, when you get to the opening, just here, you just need to make sure that you roll that over and actually press it nice and crisp. If you want to, you can actually just uh, stitch that. I generally do a ladder stitch, uh, as I've shown you in some of the previous tutorials we've done. Um, if you're really not very keen on hand sewing, we're going to top stitch it anyway, so actually it will hold it all in position. No problem at all. Um, just going to ease that one out a little bit. And that's it. It's just this last piece to do. I'm just going to make sure that this is pulled through. Now, if you wanted to put a closure on this, um, I'll show you where you actually put the loop to actually um, put a loop and button on it. Now, I'm just gonna actually stitch around this whilst I'm talking to you. So you, the first book that I showed you, um, you saw that it's got a little elastic here. What I actually use, because uh, elastic, colored elastic is quite expensive, is I actually use hairbands for the elastics you use to put your hair up. They come in a full range of colours and they're very inexpensive. Uh, and it, they just work so well. Um, there's all sorts of colours. You, you know, that's a, a, one of the cards I've got. And uh, they just work brilliantly for something like this. I also, uh, the technique I'm showing you now, um, if you use this technique to actually um, make the book, use the same technique, but don't put the inside pieces on, and then you can make yourself a needle case. And if you do that, you would then put felt in the center of them after you've constructed everything uh, and where the pages are if you use a oops, it's caught on there. if you use a decorative stitch down the middle of the felt to form a spine it actually makes the space for, so that your pins and needles do not get crushed right a little tip here I'm hoping you'll be able to see. When you turn the corner, now I, I've just got an ordinary foot on, an ordinary quarter of an inch. I haven't got a walking fit, walking foot, or an even feed, or a dual feed, or an accurate feed on it, just an ordinary foot. When you pivot here to go up the next row, um, if you think it's going to hover and get caught, place a pin behind the needle. So I've got a pin here, I'm hoping you can see, and I'm just gonna put that in the 
corner of the work behind the needle so that when I put the foot down and put my foot on the foot pedal, just ease it and it just glides straight through. So it will stop um, any of the catching, what people call uh, bird nesting, spaghetti, anything like that. And it just makes it ease through really, really quickly. So once again, pivot. I want to put a pin in here. And the reason I've done this is because not everybody has a walking foot. Um, and it just proves that actually you can get away with doing some of these things the same way. Now, you probably see here, I'm hoping you can see, I've actually got the ribbon. All I'm going to do now is pass that down because I want to actually catch that in the stitching. So I've just tucked that underneath and I'm just going to machine straight over it. At the end. Pin in the corner, making sure it's behind the needle of the sewing machine. A little tug to give it encouragement to come through. All the way down. And I'm just going to knock those threads off from where I started. Nice and close, pin in the back, behind the needle, foot down, and just ease it straight the way through. We're home dry. So, all we need to do now, you can see here, These are the strands that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to find the book and I'm just going to pop that inside. Leave those out. On one side, push it up, just bend the book over. In you go. And I've chosen to put two in here, and this is what I do for my, my diaries for work. And there you have a nice little neat book cover. They make lovely presents. Um, and again, you can customize them. So if you want to put one on your uh, cookery book, um, I use them for diaries. They make, make really nice, um, coverings for children for schools uh, and they're really fun to make and they don't take that much fabric so that's how I make I do lots and lots of different designs of book covers lots of different methods uh, this is just a really simple easy one that you can make without having to quilt it or piece it um, if you choose not to so that's the tutorial for today I hope you've enjoyed it Please do remember to support us with the exhibition. Remember, the exhibition is nothing without you. So thank you for joining us and hope to see you all again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.